Hey guys, this is Karan. I live in Saudi Arabia, studying in Niger in Yamu International School. Today we will be talking about a physics lesson called Rotational Equation of Motion. And as the topic, you might have uh, imagined that we will be talking about motion that relates in rotational motion. Well, that's perfect. But we will be talking about rotational motion with angular motion, specifically with the equations of motion as you guys can see with the constant acceleration okay this till this point we have learned the basic definition like angular velocity angular acceleration okay you would draw this concept from linear motion which we got uh, which we drew this concept by this following equations okay now the good news in this section now that you're going to learn is that it's similar to what you guys learned already okay now if you were to take this equation which you learned already which says velocity is equal to initial velocity squared plus a acceleration times time well if you were to convert that into rotational well uh, right so what you would do is you know v is equal to omega because omega tells us the velocity okay omega is equal to initial omega plus acceleration we know is alpha okay times time okay now if you were to take this equation which says distance is equal to initial velocity times time plus half acceleration half times acceleration times time squared well if you were to take this well distance is what we know as theta which gives us the angle okay now well, our initial velocity is initial omega plus time time times time plus half a acceleration is alpha times t squared and my alpha looks like a 2 over here but it really is alpha Okay. Right there. See? Okay. Now, moving on to the third and last equation. Okay. Velocity square is equal to initial velocity square plus 2 times a acceleration times distance. Okay. And velocity, which we know is omega. So, since we are squaring the velocity, as you guys can see, we square the omega initial omega square plus 2 times acceleration is again alpha okay times distance which is theta okay and this is it guys this is basically the equations that we are going to learn in physics which relates to rotational equation of motion. So these equations are not involving the pathway that is in straight line. This equation right here, as you guys can see, which we already learned, is equations that are used in linear motion, which is involving straight path. Okay. Now this equation right here is involving rotational motion. So when there is rotational motion, you use this following equations. Now I wrote this way because I just I wanted to present you the easiest way I can because I don't want to scare you guys okay okay now knowing this information over here I'm going to present you a problem okay now the problem is long so I, as a friend, I would tell you to write this formula down, okay? Because I'm going to erase it, okay? You might want to pause it right now. So, the first question is this. As you guys can see on the, on, up on the board, a car's wheel starts from the rest and accelerates to final angular velocity of 4 to 5 zero revolution per minute 
over a period of 4 seconds. What is the angular acceleration and angle through which the, uh, which the tire rotates? Okay, so we know that it starts from rest and it accelerates to 4 to 5 zero revolution per minute. Okay, so we know the initial velocity to be 0. Okay, and it's moving in a circle. Okay, so, but we know that in the any pathway, the velocity is 4 to 5, 0 revolution per minute. Okay, and it took time of 4 seconds. Okay, and we need to find the angle through which it rotates and acceleration. Okay, now the first thing is it's in revolution per minute and we want it to be in radians per second because radians per second is the basic units to solve an example that has related to be in rotational motion. Okay, so let me put this main information over here in the box. So we have four two five zero revolution. I'm going to write it up here. Four two five zero revolution per minute. Right. So we know that one revolution is. 2 pi radians. Okay, Re revolution, revolution cancels out. Now we have minutes. Let's convert minute into seconds. We know that one minute is 60 seconds. Now I wrote minutes up here, not over here, because I want the minutes, minutes to cancel out. Okay, now if I were to multiply this and divide it by this number, I would be getting my answer to be 445.1, that is radians per second. Okay, now we need to find the acceleration. Well, we know the acceleration, okay, let me just erase this up here. And this is the best way I could teach you, okay? Acceleration, we know, is change in distance over change in time. Okay? Change in distance over change in time. So the acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. Okay, now acceleration is represented as alpha, change in velocity is change in omega, divided by change in time. Now, keeping this in mind, okay, let's take change in omega basically means final minus initial omega and change in time basically means final minus initial time so it tells us that it starts from rest okay so we know the initial is zero and the final which we just found out which is 445.1 okay so what we do is 445 okay let me just write it with a black marker so you guys could see it so we do the, we use this formula up here okay and basically this formula comes what from what we already know in physics okay so change final minus initial divided by change in time so the time it took is 4 seconds and that is correct because seconds are the units we are looking forward to so and this is equal to alpha so final is 445.1 minus 0 because initial is 0 okay now change in time it took us 4 seconds okay 
Now, all we are doing is 445.1 divided by 4 because minus 0 is the same thing. So, after we do this, we get our answer to be 111.3. And that is radians per second squared. Okay? Now, we found the acceleration. We found it. The alpha is this much. Okay? Like acceleration is meter per second square, it's in radius square. Radian square. Okay? It's basically the same thing. But meter per second is used in linear motion when you have straight pathway. Okay? Now, let's find the angle theta. How many times the tire rotates? Well, we use the following equation that you guys could see. Okay? If you have written it down, the equation looks like this. Theta is equal to initial omega times time plus half times acceleration which is alpha times t squared. Now we, we use this equation because we already know all the units we, except this one which is exactly what we are trying to find. So we use this equation up here. Okay. Now if you were to use this equation okay now initial velocity is zero and zero times four is basically zero so what I'm going to do is just put zero over here plus half okay half times alpha which we found out to be one 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 point three okay times four square well if you were to f do this you would get your theta to be 890.4 and that is radians per second that's how you do it so we already found x alpha which is acceleration and we know we now know how many times it rotates how many degrees it rotates okay now as you guys can see all it takes is practice okay you get you want to get involved in physics problems to get used to it to get an expert okay so so you, you guys when you guys get when you guys get expert on this it it makes you feel like you can do any problem easily okay and that's what all we need confidence don't get scared whenever you see the problem like this when two variables are not given, like over here, we weren't given two example, two variables, but we found out, okay? So, let's move on to the next problem, and it should be up on your screen. The question says, a whirlpool starts from rest to the end accelerates to final angular velocity of 3.2 times 10 raised to 3 revolution per minute over a period of 2.3 seconds. What is its angular angle of rotational in degrees okay in degrees so we know by just looking at it we know that the angular velocity is 3.2 times 10 raised to uh, 3 okay it's revolution per minute okay and we want it to be radians and per second so what we do is convert the problem again 3.2 times 10 raised to 3 which is basically in scientific notation and this is revolution per minute okay now we know that one revolution is 2 pi radian I'm just gonna use black marker because I think it's running out of okay. so Let's take a red marker. Okay, now, now we need to convert re uh, revolution, revolution cancels out. Now we need to convert minutes into seconds. Well, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. Minute, minute cancels out. Okay, 
So, what we do over here is multiply and divide. Okay, when you do that, you'll get your answer to be 335.1, that is radians per second. Okay, keeping that in mind, let's solve for the acceleration because that's what we need to find the angle. Though it's not asking for, uh, for acceleration, but that's the procedure. You need to find the acceleration to find the angle. Okay, to put the, to put, to fill in the alpha value into the theta form. Okay, now you know that alpha is equal to final minus initial omega divided by time. So we found our answer to be 335.1 okay, minus 0 divided by 2.3 because it took then alpha, if you divide this, you'll be getting 145.7. Okay, that is in radians per meter per second squared. Okay, now if knowing the alpha, let's solve for the angle over up here. Okay, now the angle theta is equal to final omega, initial omega I mean, okay, times time plus half times alpha times t squared. Well, this is what we are finding. What we are given, let me just write that in black. We are given, we, the question is not telling us what's the initial velocity, which is here, and what is initial omega. Well, it says, the key part is, it says that it starts from rest. So when it starts from rest, it's always a zero. Okay, that is the reason we replace initial omega with zero times time, which I'm not even going to write it because zero times anything is zero, plus half times, we found the alpha to be 145, okay, so 145 times 2.3 squared, okay, now if you need to find the data which you already did, it's 338 3.5 that is radians per second okay now that is in radians per second we need in degrees so what we do is convert this back to degrees using our unit conversion okay so we have 383 Point five, that is radians. Okay, so we know that two pi radians is equal to three sixty degrees. Okay, now what happens is radians, radians cancels out, and you get your answer to be two point one six nine times 10 raised to 5, that is in degrees. Okay, since the number is too large, I'm just going to abbreviate the number in scientific notation. So, here, all we talked about is finding the angle on how much it rotates, finding the angular speed, okay, what is the speed of an object. But remember, the most part is, most important path, part is when we calculated this, of motion which is moving in uh, rotational motion okay so don't involve this motion in linear uh, linear form of equations okay thank you for watching